Tonight is September the 14th, 2014, and I have built a very nice, successful uh, directional coupler out of three quarter inch water pipe for uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It would be a zero to five watt, although I cannot test it higher than two watts, but I think you'll be very pleased with it. I'll, I'll show you the detail. I'll show you how it works first and then I'll pull it apart because i got it calibrated right now. So we'll go through that first. I'll show you how it works. It's got end connectors. This is a three quarter inch T. This is just a clamp. I've got, the, uh, got it split so that I can tighten it up. This is the three quarter inch water pipe and a cap. Got an RCA connector on top. You could use a VNC if you like. And then I'll show you, show you the insides of it. Here you can see down in there how the uh, the uh, center conductor is made it up to the uh, end connectors, how it's tapered. These holes don't matter. It don't, doesn't change it a bit, although I probably will cover it up. Let's hook it up and I'll show you how well it works and then I'll, uh, I'll pull the, uh, the sensor off right here and show you the insides of it. We'll start off the uh, testing by what I'm driving is uh, I'm using this um, HP signal generator. We're starting off at 2.4 gigahertz right here. I'm driving a, a 2 watt amplifier. Maximum output, 2, two watts. It's a 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz 2 watt amp. It's running through a, a, a dual section uh, bird line section. It's got a 5 watt element here and a 1 watt element here for reflected power. We, we won't need that but we'll use the 5 watt one and uh, here's one this one is connected here this is a homebrew job I, I salvaged this thing some time ago and I'm just using these dual elements right here for, for no particular reason but I guess because of this meter this is such a big nice meter 30 micro round it's not made by bird but it's the same difference and here is a spare bird meter I have we're going to be comparing the two and we'll be able to watch both of them at the same time I think I'll put the camera here. Let's see, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll put it on a tripod. Um, see, it's connected up. So we're going we, we just got our, we got all of our uh, sections in line and we got a uh, general radio 50 ohm load out here. It's supposed to be good up to nine gigahertz. So uh, we shouldn't have any problem. Here's the wire coming over to the bird meter. So let's put this thing on a tripod we can really compare these two and, uh, and watch it carefully. I think you'll like this. Okay, what I'll do first is I'll turn the RF on. I've already got it adjusted to 2 watts and as uh, best I can. I'll run them both up to 2 watts. As you can see, this is on a 5 watt scale. This is 2 and that one's 2. Right on. Very, very, very close. And then I start backing down the gain on the uh, RF generator. I'll back it down. See, it's a little over two now. I'll back it down to say one and a half. I'm watching the big meter. I'll back it down to because that's our that's one that uses our bird slugs. There's one and a half, and then you can see the one and a half over here. I'm trying not to disturb anything. I'll back it down to one. a little dark in here but otherwise I get a so much darn glare there's one watt one watt here one watt there hope you can see that good back it down to a half a watt there's a half a watt they track almost exactly together it's it's they're it's it's very nice I'm very very pleased with it and one watt here I'll show you here's a uh, one watt I can switch this one I can switch the element no that's not important well there it is so it so it tracks great that was a real challenge that was a serious challenge that's not easy to do and uh, unfortunately I can't seem to repeat it okay now let me take it apart and I'll show you what I built Okay, I've loosened the collar up. This is just a, a collar and I'll pull this apart. There's what's inside. 
there's a uh, this is a 100 ohm quarter watt resistor it's soldered right to the case over here see I've got a copper plug in there recessed I guess about 3 eighths of an inch but the uh, the 100 ohm quarter watt resistor is soldered right over here and then it's soldered to the uh, right on top of a diode. The diode is in series. On the other side of the diode there's a, a 001 capacitor right off the diode soldered to this top. It's soldered to this. I've had different I've had different kinds of problems when I soldered it to the case. So it goes right back to ground here. Then there's a 1K resistor in series that goes to this. That's all that that's all there is to that. Although this is a very important piece. Now what this is, this is the line section. And I think you can see down in there. There's a uh, what it, it is is it's made out of the you know, the inside of it is made out of this 3 8 inch. This is what's inside. And you want to taper it at each end like this when you solder it onto your end connectors. Now you got to solder this on and get seriously hot. You must use uh, true Teflon end connectors. I bought some cheap ones that were just white plastic. They looked like Teflon and it just melted it to smithereens. It was just ridiculous. Let's see if I can turn some lights on here. Maybe I'll see a little better. I want to be able to see down in there. The, what these holes are for is you can solder it on the one end, but you, you're going to have to you're going to have to solder it once you assemble all this together. Uh, you you got to figure yourself out an assembly technique, and then you got to solder it through that hole. You can cover it back up if you want. I got some uh, some copper tape here. I probably will put over it just for neatness to keep uh, dirt and stuff out. But that's what's inside. Now let me show you this. Uh, you know that. Um, Impedance is, uh, I'm going to write it down over here, it's 128 uh, times the log base 10 of the diameter ratio D1 over D2. Okay, so let's, let's measure these things. And uh, we do. Um, we find out that a 3 quarter inch T is not 3 quarters of an inch. It's actually about, see that? It's about 0 0.875. Okay? 0 0.875. So we'll write that down. 0 0.875. I'm going to show you my math over here in a second. And then the diameter of this is 0 0.3745. Okay? 0 0.3745. And if you want it in inches, you just press this inch, feet, millimeter thing, see, and it reads out three eighths. Hope that's coming out. I think it is. So it's three eighths. And then if we go over here and uh, we do the math, this is our uh, equation right here for a line section. So it's it's going to be 128 times the log base 10 of this. And I'll show you how that comes out. That's 0 0.875. 0 0.875. Enter. 0 0.3745. 0 0.3745. You, take, you divide that. Take the log of that, base 10, and you multiply that times 128. 128 times. Well, I made a mistake there. Okay, let's try that again. Point, point eight seven five point eight seven five point three seven four five point three seven four five divide log one twenty eight times. See what we get. Got to be able to see that. 47.18 ohms. That's close enough to 50 ohms. That's going to work. So now we have a 50 ohm line section. And it's for real. It really works. The way that I tested it first is I just simply, without putting anything in here, 
believe it or not, the, these open sections uh, don't affect it very much at all. Have very little effect on it. But you can just put this, just put your RF in here and a dummy load here and measure its, measure the SWR of this and it's, uh, it's perfect. Turns out really great. Okay, now the trick to this right here um, is that 100 ohm resistor, the diode. I'll, I'll draw you. A, let's, let's draw a diagram of that too. I'll show you the way it's built. You might be interested in. Uh, it, it's built like this. Okay. This is that little copper piece going across it. It's got the 100 ohm resistor soldered right here. It goes across, a little 100 ohm resistor, and then it goes right into the diode. And the diode is it's going through a hole right here. Should have drawn that hole. It goes through the hole into the little diode. The diode is facing this way. So it hooks onto the cathode of the diode. This is the cathode, this is the anode, and then it's got a capacitor. Um, yeah, this is just the symbol for this diode right here. And it's got a capacitor right back to ground, real close by, about a .001, and then it's got a 1K resistor that goes out to this RCA connector. I know this is crude, but I hope that helps. And the RF flows this way. It comes in. Nope, 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 nope. That's ex that's exactly wrong. RF flows this way, meaning let's see, let's get the device. The RF flows this way. This is f this is forward power with the diode. If you turn it around, you're reading reverse power, and you get nothing or virtually nothing. I don't get as perfect a uh, uh, a, a reverse reading on this as the bird element. I mean, if I did, I could put Bert out of business overnight. <laughs> so it's not that easy to make these things and um, and make the front to back ratio of them really high. But it's not bad. Yeah, but, but that's the way the power flows. It flows this way. Okay? Um, let's see. Um, well, let me think about this a second. Here are three other ones that I built that do not work near as well. See, this one's got a uh, feed through. That's uh, only about 60 or 80 picofarad, so it's got a, a um, capacitor on the other side. See, I had the diode stand up and the resistor. Doesn't work very well. Here's one. I was trying to duplicate it, and this one just doesn't work very well either. And here's one with a different kind of diode. I actually a higher frequency diode. And the problem is, is the linearity. It's, it, it, it's. I, I can't explain it quite honestly. It, it's really unfortunate. But I, this one here, the one that I'm using, it, power flows this way. Let's see, it goes into the diode and resistor junction first. And then you just slide this thing in and out, you know, making it parallel. That's why I got some marks on it. I'll clean those off. But you just slide this in and out until uh, it uh, it calibrates, and there you go. It actually works quite nice. So this one works well on a five watt scale. If I use the uh, if I use this right here get exactly the same reading so it's driving a this one is built to drive a 30 micro amp meter movement which is uh, is what all the bird meters use it's turned out really good I'm really pleased with it what happened what prompted me to do that is I bought a little a Chinese watt meter been uh, working with a gentleman named Ken I won't call call letters or anything I don't want to put anybody on YouTube that doesn't want to be there but this one, I just could not make work very well. This is the original ones. It, it might be worth looking at. Let me see if I can get the case of it off right quick. And uh, 
but this one did not turn out very well. Ah, oh, no, I got it all boxed in. I did my best to make it uh, as good as I could, but it just didn't turn out very well. It uh, wasn't linear. Uh, reflective power was poor. It just, just, just didn't do very well. I do have to show you the reflected power or we wouldn't be complete here. So see, I've, I've got it reversed. This one says out. It says in. I just, I just turned it around. I recalibrated and turned it around. And if I... This one, the real one, and this is using the one watt. Well, let's, let's, let's be fair about it. Let's do this. Let's just turn this one around. See, it measures... Oh... On a five watt scale, one and a half, so those are 0.1 each, 0 0.05. This one measures about 0.3. So it's, uh, it's reverse power reading is not quite as good, but it's not bad. It could be worse if we flip there and go up to the one water. See, it's just, so it's not too bad. It turned out better than I expected, but like I said, I'm just, I, I can't duplicate it, and I'm really disappointed in that, so, you know, to publish something like this and say, look how great this is, look how successful I am, look how I did it and then document it as best you can, and then build over and over these different things, the same type, and uh, I can't get the same result, it's kind of disappointing, but that's the way it is. Hope you enjoy these uh, goofy little uh, Wi-Fi antenna measuring devices that I build. Let's see if I put this on forward. See, there's our for for forward power again. I'd have to unscrew this one and turn it around. Um, so that's about it. Oh, I, there is one other thing I was going to show you that, that you may very well be aware of. Or maybe not. You want to use germanium diodes because they have a uh, they conduct at a much lower voltage than the silicon ones. And if you use these um, modern day meters and you put it on the diode when you um, when you connect it across the diode you'll see a reading something like that. That's actually the voltage the break, the forward breakdown voltage that starts conducting at 0.235 volts. I don't know if everybody knows that or not. Now, if we put a um, a, uh, a regular silicone type diode in there, that's its that's its uh, forward voltage, and if you it makes it really sensitive. Now, if we put um, a silicone type diode in there. Let's see, this is the cathode, this is the anode. Then we get, see that, 0 0.542 volts. And they're going to vary slightly, but that's its breakdown. That's its forward breakdown voltage. Of course, this thing is much too large to use at 2 gigahertz, but that's one way you can tell the uh, silicone diodes from the germanium diodes. I think that was all I was going to document on here. Um, I did break down and buy the two elements. I just couldn't stand it. I had to have them. So I got the 5 watt and the 1 watt. Uh, so I'm still having fun. Hope you enjoy these videos. Last but not least, we have to uh, test it between 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz. The air is not too bad there. I'll turn the RF on. So I'll turn the RF on. Got it set to 2.4. I set this so that we're running it up. Uh, we'll run it to 2.41, and 2,500. See, as I turn this, we will start going up in frequency like that. Okay, and then we'll watch these. I got them both set, dead center on one and a half watts. So you can see that one. You can see that one. Okay, and we'll watch them. Okay, I'm going to go from 24, 2400 to 2410. Steady. 
they both rise ever so slightly back to 2410 to 2420 uh, I'm sure that that's because of the gain of this I'm sure that the output of my HP over here is uh, is quite good but uh, it's ever so slightly because you'll see some significant changes here in a minute we're at 2420 2430 see they both rise 2440 50 they both drop and sink 60 drop significantly down to um, what would that be 1.2 1.2 that's at 2460, 70, 80, 90, and 2500. Let's see, now we're at 2500. And they're both reading just, let's see, that was just a hair over half a watt. Same there. So it's uh, it, it's very, it, it tracks uh, it, just amazing. I, I'm pretty flabbergasted at, at how well it does track with, with the bird. There you go. I think that uh, finishes it off.